Hello again, this is Anthony Priscilla, and today we're going to solve a nonlinear inequality x over x minus 6 is greater than or equal to 2x, and we're going to do this with our famous cut point method. The first thing you do when trying to decide or solve when, figure out when this fraction is greater than or equal to 2x, is to first find when it equals 2 minus. 2x. So we're going to solve x over x minus 6 equals 2x. And you can solve both, uh, multiply both sides by x minus 6 or cross multiply, whatever you want to do. I'm going to cross multiply. 2x times x is 2x squared minus 6 times 2x minus 12x equals 1 times x is just x. And we know this is a quadratic equation because of the x squared here. So let's get a 0 on one side and factor. I'll get a 0 by moving that x over, which means subtract x. So we'd have 2x squared, negative 12x minus 1x would be a negative 13x. And just factor this, we could just factor out a variable x from each term. So if we factor the x from each of these, x times 2x will give us the 2x squared. x times a minus 13 would give us a minus 13x. And you can just sort of check this by distributing the x to see if 2x times x, that's 2x squared minus 13x. So yeah, we factored it correctly. Now let's set each one of these factors to 0. Don't forget that x equals 0. Sometimes students forget to set that to 0. And to solve this, I'll move the 13 over by adding 13 to both sides and dividing by 2. These numbers here are our solution cut points. So I'll just say SCP. Remember, for solution cut points, you look up here to decide if it's an open or closed circle. Since there's an equal sign, it's a closed circle. You'll want to include 0 and 13 over 2 as solutions because, well, take the 0 for instance. If you put a 0 in, we'd have 0 over negative 6, which is 0. 2 times 0 is 0, so 0 greater than or equal to 0 is a true statement, so you would want to include those as that number as a solution. If there hadn't been an equal sign there, 0 greater than 0, that would be a false statement. So that's the solution cut point. Now let's find the denominator cut point or the domain cut point, whatever you want to call it. Well, the one thing we can't ever have in the denominator of a fraction is 0. So x minus 6 can't be 0, which means x cannot be 6. You would never want 6 over 0. For any denominator cut point, when you label that on the number line, it'll always be an open circle. Now let's draw a number line and test interval. Hmm. We have one, two, three cut points. Mm -hmm. Pardon me there, it's the timer on these lights. I'm not moving enough, so it's not thinking that there's anyone in here. Now, 13 halves is 6 and a half, so it's bigger than 6. Make sure you put these numbers in numerical order on the number line, because you're going to sure get the wrong answer. So open circle on the 6, closed circle, and closed circle. And then test as many of these intervals as you want. Uh, there were no repeated factors no uh, here, and so... Uh, I guess formally we could say there's no even multiplicity in these things. So we're going to, it's going to alternate. 
So test one or two of them. I think I'll test the number one. Right here. Test one. When I do this testing, I put it in the original problem. We'd have one over one minus six is negative five is greater than or equal to two times uh, one is two. So we have negative one-fifth is greater than two. That's going to be false. So the way these things alternate, false, true, false, this one would here would be true, but you might want to test more than just one, just to make certain you didn't mess up. If we wanted to test this one, maybe we'd use a negative one or a negative two, any negative number. So I'm to test negative one. We'd have negative one over negative one minus six is negative seven, greater than or equal to. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. So we have 1 seventh greater than or equal to negative 2. Now a positive is sure bigger than a negative. So that is true. Now I'll leave the rest of them for you to check. But we can write our, last, our final answer in interval notation. Thinking of negative infinity. Negative infinity comma 0 bracket union parentheses 6 comma 13 halves. Notice we're using brackets for the closed circle, parentheses for the open circle. Always put parentheses by the infinity symbols. And so this is it for solving this little uh, nonlinear inequality. Very nice method. The cut point method. Solve it with an equals to find the solution cut points. Look up here to decide between open and closed circles. Close for solution cut points if there's an equal, open if there isn't. Then find the denominator or domain cut points by saying denominator can't be zero. Always an open circle. Plot the numbers. Test the interval. True statements are the uh, ones you'll be shading. And the false statements are the ones that aren't part of the solution. So anything to the left of zero, including zero, anything between six and thirteen halves, not including six, but including thirteen halves. And that's it.